The investigation required that I ask Jake for a small favor. Or demand it, if worse came to worst. hits does a boxer take to the head throughout his career? This one's got extra padding, just like Jake. Hey, hi. Hey, focus, will ya? That lizard isn't Yale's doctor. He's been training with those same shorts for who knows how long. I hope he never feels inclined to hit me. He's twice my size. Not the smartest cookie in the jar, nor the most tactful. But do I trust him? No. Do I consider him a friend? Yes. Hey, Jake. Not now, John. All right, that's enough. <clears throat> Take five. Go on. What, John? What's so important? Have you noticed anything strange about Sonia? I don't know. Yesterday, she said she hated the gym, but it also seemed like she wanted to save the place. Do you get any of this? I sure don't. It might not have seemed that way, but she loved her dad. Believe me, I've got reasons to be certain. Why are you coaching that guy? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Sonia asked me to run the gym. Well, at least the fun part. As soon as Bobby Yale's back on his feet, I'll turn him into a champ. I'll make him crush stone. Just you wait. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Is it the first time you coached anyone? Yeah, but uh, you think I can't do this, don't you? Well, screw you. We'll win that fight. Could you tell me where O'Leary's headquarters are? Uh, what for? No, no, no. You could get me into trouble. No way. You lied to me yesterday. And being the good friend that I am, I kept your secret. You owe me. I don't think I'd keep protecting you if we weren't friends. Although, if we were friends, you wouldn't hesitate to help me. Tell me, Jake, are we friends or not? Damned cat. All right. O'Leary's hideout. 
is in the basement of a Chinese restaurant. But I don't even know how to get in. Well, I'll see you tonight. Wait, were we supposed to meet? Of course. Your place, 11 p.m. See you there. Ronald, the break's over. After 30 hours of work and several beatings, every bone in my body ached for a bed. Now it's my turn. So I went home to recharge. <laughs> because the night ahead was bound to be promising. What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Nothing? Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. I'm running out of threats to get you talking, Jake. And frankly, I don't want things to get violent. I've come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in the dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door, that red one there. All right, you stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. That got it? Screw you. A promising night indeed. A bit too high to climb, if the basement I'm looking for were in that building. <laughs> I'm guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. Does he need a shotgun to deal with suppliers? <laughs> Maybe it leads to the basement. Would he even notice if I got in? No. The plan will only work if O'Leary doesn't know I've been here. What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? From the back door, I can see a hall that might lead to the basement. Does that sound familiar? O'Leary sometimes comes from a hallway. But who knows if it's that one? Are you done? What do you think? There's a guy watching TV inside the restaurant. A red panda, I think. Does it ring a bell? I don't recall any panda waiters. What's taking you so long? You want to switch places? Check out that graffiti. You're in On Leon Tong territory. Wow, I thought the Tong Wars had ended years ago. Maybe someone nostalgic just got bored. Damn Chinese mafias. Yeah, American mafias are infinitely better, no doubt. 
I need you to go to the front door and ring the bell. All right, is there a bar in that alley? Have you been drinking? Count to 30, ring the bell, then run for the car. Got it? Whoa, you better send a bunch of Natalias my way after this. So, now what are you gonna do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in, I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. The lock on that door was not your standard model. I had to give it my all. I was expecting some frozen bodies. Hmm. It won't budge. The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Neal is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. Hmm. There's one on each table, except this one. Does O'Leary have a network of pals? I didn't realize you could place so many bets on a single baseball game. Hmm. 
A little thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? Sixteen days until the fight. Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids and... Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. It looks like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute, did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? Could that be Ireland? I'd say that's Ireland too. A crossler? The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about 20,000 in a drawer. Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed. The painting concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information. Ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. 
Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend, the incorruptible police commissioner? I sighed in relief. O'Leary had tried to buy Smirnoff on several occasions, but failed. Luckily, O'Leary had nothing on him, or me. In Bobby Yale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. I hope I never become the object of O'Leary's obsession. Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. Luckily or not, files N through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. Dunn's integrity was legendary, even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said. Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him sneaking around. The report on Yale's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, the rivalry went way back, so much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. 